Okay guys, welcome to the course of new product and service management. Today's topic is uh, service quality and productivity. So this is the, taken from the chapter 14, improving service quality and productivity. And this is the overview of chapter 14. Number one is integrating service quality and productivity strategies. And what is a service quality? The gaps model, the gap is uh, is a, a discrepancy between the uh, expectations and perceptions of service and uh, measuring and improving service quality defining and measuring productivity and also how to improve service productivity and how to integrate service quality and productivity strategies actually service quality we have already covered in the previous week and also you have studied the quality management course uh, I believe that you still remember the service quality or surface mo surf call model. And now how it is related to the productivity strategy. So quality and productivity are twin paths to creating value for both customers and companies. The quality focuses on the benefits created for the customer, whereas uh, productivity addresses financial costs incurred by the firm. So the importance of productivity, of course, to uh, keep the cost down, it means that to reduce the input, to improve the, the output, the profit, or to reduce the prices. And it is to enable firm to spend more on improving customer service and supplementary services and secure the firm future to increase spending and on R&D, research and development, and it may impact service experience. Of course, it is related to marketers must work to minimize negative effects and to promote positive effects. So what is uh, service for quality? So this is a kind of review, guys, because uh, you have already known uh, the service quality. So before we go to the service quality model, we take a look on the definition of quality itself in the service quality. So quality can be excellence recognized only through the experience. This is according to perspective of transcendence and perspective on product quality is precise and measurable. Uh, on user base, quality lies in the eyes of beholder or users. And this is a manufacturing base. Quality is conformant to the firm's developed specifications. And the value base is quality is trade off between price and value itself. So in manufacturing base, quality depends on the perspective of performance. This is talking about the primary operating characteristic and features like a bells and whistles, reliability, probability of malfunction or failure, conformance. This is talking about the ability to meet the specifications durability, how long the product continues to provide value to the customers, service, avail avail uh, service ability, it is talking about the speed, courtesy, and the competence. Aesthetic is talking about how the product appeals to the customers, to the users, and service quality, uh, service quality is talking about, uh, sorry, I mean perceived quality is talking about associations such as brand name so it's talking about the image and then now it becomes the core of service quality service base we have five dimensions according to paras rahman model so we have tangible this is appearance of physical elements reliability is talking about dependable and accurate performance responsiveness talking about the promptness helpfulness assurance is a competence courtesy credibility security and finally, empathy is talking about the easy access, acute communications, and understanding of customers. So how to capture a customer perspective of service quality? Of course, we can conduct survey, uh, research instrument based on the premise that customer evaluate firm service quality by comparing what? Perceptions and expectations. So per perception is talking about what we perceive, what actually we receive. From, uh, from the service, what we experience. Uh, and however, expectation is uh, what we expect. Usually customer has high expectation uh, than the perceptions. But 
uh, again to make it fair enough then we can compare so uh, what is the expectation and the perception so it is called poor quality when perceived performance less than expectations but it's good quality when perceived performance greater than expectations and it is okay or well fit to the quality when the perceptions equal to expectation and uh, this model is called self -call, developed uh, primarily in the context of face-to-face -face encounter scale have uh, 22 items reflecting five dimensions and subsequent research have highlighted some limitation of self -call, okay and also we have e service quality it is a uh, uh, electronic service quality actually e uh, service quality we call it es qual it is uh, used for electronic based service right uh, uh, yeah we have one two three four five six seven eight eight dimensions number one is accessibility is site easily found navigations how easy is it to move around the site design and presentation is talking about image projected from the site Content and purpose, we have substance and richness of the site. Currency and accuracy, responsiveness is talking about firms. Propensity to respond to emails. And we have interactivity, customizations and personalizations. And finally, we have reputation and security. So this is talking, uh, this is taken from uh, International Children Papers in 2000 with the title, A Conceptual Model to Measure Service Quality on online companies equal okay in development in marketing science so uh, other consideration consideration in service quality measurement in uncompetitive market or in a situation when customer do not have a free choice researchers should use needs or wants as comparison standard so this is based on the time constraints and services in a high in credence characteristics may cause consumers to use process factors and tangible cues as proxies to evaluate quality hello effect. So it is based on the customer feeling. So it means that we have a time constraints and also the customer feeling constraint. Sometimes when we uh, uh, yeah when we measure the service quality, uh, uh, sometimes uh, we as a customers we just looking at the uh, uh, I mean tangible cues, right? The tangible cues. So tangible cues such, such as the the buildings, the perform uh, the appearance of uh, um, um, appearance of the lobby. For example, we talk about the hotel, or we talk about the cinema building, right? So. Uh, I think it is not complex. So this one is a uh, measurement uh, is talking about sometimes customer uh, uh, test or customer give feedbacks in is uh, in in the not uh, complete or incomplete measurement. So uh, so uh, be careful about this one. Okay, and then this, uh, next one we try to make sure that uh, how to make a service. Uh, quality is uh, appropriate to our company and it means that service quality sometimes uh, it works when um, yeah, we, we find that uh, our perceptions or customer perception is greater than the expectations that's that's the things that we expect as the, the company but what if uh, the perception is below or less than the expectation so we can use the gap models it is a conceptual tool to identify and correct a service quality problem. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven caps. So usually, uh, what we just mentioned, uh, I just mentioned many, many times, it is called service gap. It is talking about the expectations and perceptions. But actually, we have uh, six other gaps. Number one is knowledge gap. Number two is standard gaps. Number three is delivery gaps. Number four. It is, it is the executions, uh, delivery specs, and also the, the advertising and sales promise gap. Number four, yeah, we 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 uh, we call it internal communication gaps. 
Number five is perception gap. Number six is interpretation gaps. So number seven is surface gap. It's actually number seven is the combinations gap. Number one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we take a look one by one. Uh, this is the prescriptions or uh, suggestions, right? For closing the seven surface quality gaps. So number one is knowledge gaps. So we have to learn what the customer expects. So understand the customer expectations, improve communication between frontline staff and management by frontline staff. Again, frontline staff has a very significant role to address uh, directly and promptly what the customer wants, okay? And the customer expect, and then turn information and insight into action promptly, quickly, okay? And then number two is standard gaps. It is to specify service quality standard that reflect expectations and what we do we set communicate and reinforce customer oriented service standard for all work units to all uh, employees for all uh, divisions okay and measure performance and provide regular feedbacks and reward managers and employees this is to motivate our employees then uh, that one is delivery gap Delivery. So the keyword is delivery. It is to ensure service performance meets the standard. So we need to clarify employee rules, rules, train employees in priority settings and time management, eliminate role conflict among employees and delivery or uh, develop good reward system. Okay. And then number four is internal communication gap. This is really the internal conflict okay the internal potential problem uh, so we need to ensure that communication promises are realistic and what we do seek commands from frontline employees and operation personals about proposed advertising campaign and get sales staff to involve operations staff in meeting with the customer why this is very important Sales and operations should be uh, understandable, so they have to communicate well because sales is uh, actually more direct to the customers, but operation is more direct to the inside the process of a company. So they are separated. It looks like they are uh, far, far away. Okay, so they have to be communicated. So they have to be close enough and they share the experience so that any problems can be uh salt together okay and then to ensure that communication sets realistic customer expectations and then perception gap uh, this is to educate customer to see reality of service quality delivery so what we do we keep customer informed during service delivery and debrief of the delivery and provide physical evidence okay number six is interpretation gap Pre-test communications to make sure that message is clear enough and unambiguous. Okay, present communication materials to the sample customer in advance of publication. So this one is yeah, it's communication because it's talking about the interpretations. Okay, what we expect, what we uh, uh yeah, what we want actually, uh, yeah, significantly accepted. And uh, yeah, it's updated correctly by the customers. Okay, number seven is service gap close gap number one to six to meet customer expectation consistently. Okay, so measuring and improving service quality, we have soft and hard measures of service quality. Number one, soft measures is not easily observed, must be collected by talking to the customer, employees, and others. So we need to provide directions, guidance, and feedback to employees on ways to achieve customer satisfactions and can be quantified by measuring customer perception and belief. For example, we conduct service quality model surveys, uh, customer advisory uh, panels by focus group discussions, for example. Okay, So soft measure, uh, actually, we co conduct uh, uh, surveys. Okay? And then hard measures can be counted, time, and measured through audits so typically operational processes or outcomes and standard often set with reference to percentage of occasions on which a particular measure is achieved and this is to control chart 
uh, I mean this one example is control charts uh, which is useful for displaying performance over time against specific quality standard so this one is countable okay countable and measurable and uh, one example of control charts uh, and this one is uh, done by survey so the combination between soft and uh, soft and hard measure it can be awesome okay for the company and some measures of service quality uh, this is a key customer centric service quality measures including yeah as i said before we conduct total market survey annual survey transactional surveys service uh, feedback cards mystery shopping analysis of unsolicited feedback and this is uh yeah this is critical guys unsolicited feedback because it's not actually spoken by the customer so that we try to to ask the customer to speak up okay and we can collect through the complaints and compliments uh, we conduct focus group discussions and service reviews and also ongoing service of account holders to determine satisfaction in terms of broader relationship issues customer especially panels we invite customer uh, representative to give us a feedback or advice on the performance and employee surface and panels to determine perception as a quality of service delivered to the customer on specific dimensions and also we try to identify some barriers to better service and situation for improvement so the keywords here are we invite customer to speak up or to talk to us and then to give us feedbacks and some improvement ideas and then maybe we, we, we can give uh the uh rewards okay and then uh we invite them to be involved in our service improvement okay and then hard measures of service quality as mentioned before and uh, one example i want to charts this is to monitor a single variable offering a simple method of displaying performance over time again it's a specific quality standard it's very good if data on which they are based is accurate and also enable easy identification of trend and service quality indexes this is a embrace key activities that have an impact of customer this is one here illustration of control chart and this is one example of fedex virtual express service quality index we call it sqi and they have various types one two three four etc so this is actually based on the historical data so what the parallel types can be late delivery, uh, right day, wrong day, tracing requests unanswered, and etc. So, so this is according to the previous data or historical data, and we they they they, they put weighting factors, and um, this one, so 10, 10, this one is can be ten percent, so the highest is ten percent for miss pick up, lost packets, and damaged packets. Why this is very important. They put it a highest weight because it's talking about Federal Express. This is the expedition company, right? So we speak up lost packets and damage of uh, packets are critical. And according to the number of incidents, so uh, actually you can you can uh, take data daily or monthly or weekly, and then you uh, count the daily points, and also you can have the total value points and for the daily point divided by total value points we have the percentage and then to see what's the highest percentage which is a very critical failure time okay it's uh, simple right and this is one example uh, flights departing within 15 minutes of scheduling so this is a month and this is the uh, flights departing okay and it can be the the number of flights in on time or the number of flights uh, late okay depending on your discernment okay and also we can use tools to analyze and address service quality problems we can use this bone diagram i think everybody knows right it's this cost impact diagram to identify potential causes of problem pareto you, you still remember the pareto law 80 20 rules right so uh, we can find 20 percent uh, problems uh, major 20 percent which is uh, influencing 80 percent 
of the performance so or 20% of courses that uh, yeah bring impact 80% major problems and also we have blueprinting this is a visualization of service delivery identifying points critical points when failures are most likely to occur and also we have TQM total quality management and ISO 9000 uh, Malcolm product model applied to services and a six sigma a six sigma for services of course and so I think ISO and Malcolm product model you have already known this one as well in your um, uh, uh, I mean quality management standard course right and also this one is six sigma I think the keyword is 3.4 defects per millions so it allows as we talk about service so it it is allowed to have maybe a maximum four defects per one million self uh, offering okay service offering i think it is very 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 challenging and this is an example of a uh, face phone i think you know this one is uh talking about that maybe this one is delayed departure is a flight service and yeah the cost will be procedures okay maybe the delay check-in procedures acceptance of late passengers and also we take a look on front states personal facilities equipment material supplies back state personal information etc okay and then the analysis of causes flight departures using the i mean the pie chart and take a look here from the new art and the uh, uh, all stations excluding Chicago Mitri Hub and Washington National and then take a look at the, the blue I think it's the blue portion this is the highest it is talking about late passengers and also late passengers and the passengers so the cost of flight departures is mostly caused by late passengers so you guys you cannot uh, yeah please don't be late because it late and it caused the flight departures okay so blueprinting it depicts a sequence of from state interaction experienced by customers plus supporting backstage activities and use the identity of potential fault points and it shows how various at one point may have a ripple effect later and manager can identify points with need urgent attention so guys this is kind of uh you know the operation process charge right and this is the like a uh, service operation chart so we just drawing a chart that showing all flows in services uh, starting from the front states uh, until the back states okay and six sigma methodology to improve and prevent service processes also the same as the six sigma pro for manufacturing starting from define and then followed by measures analyze improve and controlling so G M A I C uh, process so these are the process improvement uh, items and process design items okay i think it's the uh, it's uh yeah it's quite the same so the spirit is uh pgca plan to check action so planning it find it defining and then to uh, measuring analyzing check uh yeah uh analyzing right and then action is improving and controlling and then start with the defining again and also the tqm in service context we have 12 critical dimension for implementations we have a top management commitment human resource management technical system it is including the service process design and process management and then we have information analysis system and smart continuous improvement, customer focus, employee satisfactions, union intervention and employee relations, social responsibility, service skip. You still remember service skip, guys? Yes, correct. Service skip is talking about the uh, physical surrounding, and of course, this is very important as well for the service uh, quality, right? And then service culture. I think all terminologies you have known, right? Um, especially this one uh, continuous improvement this is a spirit of industrial engineering uh, discipline so we have to improve continuously for everything okay and then return on quality because quality is talking about cost as well right 
So assess cost and benefit of quality initiative. So return on quality approach is based on four assumptions. Quality is investment. Quality effort must be financially accountable. And it is uh, possible to spend too much on quality and not all quality expenditures are equally valid. Okay, the implication is that quality improvement effort may benefit from being related to productivity improvement programs. And then it is to determine visibility of new quality improvement report, determine cost, and then relate to anticipated customer response. And then we need to determine optimal level of reliability. Yes, this is a talking about reliability. So um, there is a uh, yeah trade off between improvement and also the investment. Okay, knowing where improving service reliability become uneconomical. So it means that. When you improve something, improve service, and then spending costs, right, uh, for the investment, and then you have to know where the reliability is optimum. When the reliability level will be decreasing, then you have to stop it. Okay, this is called the optimal level of reliability. And this is the, the illustration. So uh, this one is investment. So lots a uh, small cost from A to B, right? But so we have large involvement. How come from A B and then there's a huge gap in service reliability from this one until this one, right? So it means that uh, small cost, com uh, yeah, because it compare a lot uh, uh, that that cost compared to the improvement level, the delta for small co uh, the delta for cost is smaller than the delta for service reliability, but what happened to this one from C to D? This is large cost, so the delta is higher. The delta for costing for investment is higher than the delta for service reliability. So, here we have to stop here. This one is the optimal point of reliability, okay? Because the total cost for failure is equal to the service recovery. So, this one this is the opportunity. We need to satisfy target customer through service recovery. So, we have to recover first. Fast means that to close a gap, and then this one is the satisfied target customer true service will be as planned. So this is our uh, our chance to deliver service the best we can do, right? As a plan, okay. Be careful that uh, what we have promised, what we have planned should be implemented. Okay. And then next one is the defining and measuring productivity. So after we have you known service quality, what happened to the productivity? So productivity measures amount of output produced relative to the amount of input. So the concept is the same, output divided by input. So the improvement in productivity means that improvement in the ratio of output to input. So we have to uh, increase the output and then decrease the input as uh, or the same input, but we have to maximize the output. The tangible nature of many service element makes it hard to measure productivity of service firm, especially for information based service. Yes, you know, because it is intangible and then it, it is difficult in most service because both input and output are hard to define. As I mentioned, it is more on the intangible and relatively simpler in position processing service compared to information and people processing. But so you can try, even though it is very challenging. And efficiently, uh, efficiency. So, what is the uh, yeah the connection between efficiency, productivity, and effectiveness? So, we have to know the definition first. Efficiency involves comparison to standard, usually time based. For example, how long employees takes to perform specific tasks. So the problem is focus on input rather than outcomes. May ignore variation in service quality and or, or value. Value. So this one is. Uh, yeah, the focus is uh, to standard more on standard on the inputs, and then productivity involves financial valuation of output to input. Yes, productivity is very important for the company because it, I, I think all the companies, yeah, all companies should uh, achieve higher productivity, the maximum productivity. This consistent delivery of outcomes desired by customers should come in higher price. Okay. And effectiveness is talking about the degree to which firm meets goals. 
yeah, the QSS goal cannot be forced effectively from quality and customer satisfaction. So, uh, so what's the uh, connections? Uh, of course, there's close connections. Productivity uh, is influenced by high effectiveness and high efficiency as well, right? So it means that effectiveness by uh, yeah, high effectiveness, high efficiency can make the high uh, productivity. Yeah. Okay. And then please uh, digest and then uh, now our job as service provider is how to achieve high efficiency and then how to achieve high effectiveness so that the higher productivity can be achieved as well. And ensuring service productivity, variability is a major problem. Yes, especially uh, this service is um, delivered by human. Uh, yes, of course the variability is uh, much higher. So traditional measure of service output tend to ignore variation in quality of service uh, or value of service. So focus on in output rather than outcomes and stress efficiency but not effectiveness. Firms that consistently deliver outcome decide that customer can command higher price while your customer are more profitable, right? And measures with customer as denominator include profitability by customer, capital employee, but proper customer, shareholder for customer. So it means uh, here, I think it's the key with this, uh, the second statement here that firms that consistently deliver outcomes desired by customer can come in higher price. It means that when the customer is satisfied, so we can expect, we can ask them to pay more. That's the, yeah, I think it's a, a direct statement. Uh, easy to understand, right? And loyal customer are more profitable, of course. So, uh, how to improve service productivity? Question when development strategies to improve service productivity. How to transform input into output efficiently? Will improving productivity hurt quality? Will improving quality hurt productivity? Are employees or technology the key to productivity? And can customers contribute to higher productivity? So typical uh, strategies to improve service productivity are careful control of costs in every step or in process so we cut costs. But we have to ask ourselves if this uh, effective or not, right? And effort to reduce wasteful uh, use of materials or labor. Yes, and then to replace workers by automated machines. It's like, uh, you know, in many bankings now, they have ATM machines. ATM not to deposit, uh, sorry, uh, ATM is not just uh, withdraw the money, but also deposit money. And installing expert system that allow para professionals to take on work professionally performed by professionals who earn higher salaries. So although improving productivity can be approached incrementally, major gain often require redesigning entire process. Okay. So uh, this is a long waiting time may indicate need for service process redesign. Yeah, I think it is a uh, very common <coughs> situations uh, waiting and uh, especially waiting in the healthcare service is not really good guys. And how to improve service productivity? Uh, yeah, this is operation driven strategy. <clears throat> we can control costs, reduce waste, set productivity capacity to match average demand, automate labor, upgrade equipment, train employees, running array of tasks that a service worker can perform. So this is a multi <clears throat> tasking job. And then leverage less skilled employees through expert system and service process redesign. And then uh, customer service, uh, customer driven strategies, change timing of customer demand. So by setting demand away from peak, manager can make better use of firm productive asset and provide better service. And then involve customer more in productions, but it's very challenging that customer to solve service and encourage customer to obtain information and buy from firms corporate website and then ask customer to use third parties uh, we can uh, delegate delivery of supplementary service element to intermediary organizations 
And then back state enrollment can ripple to front and affect the customers. Keep abreast of proposed back state changes, not only to identify such people, but also to prepare customers for them. So for example, here, new printing peripherals may affect appearance of bank statement. Okay. Now, um, I think it's, it's much better we can uh, use emails to receive any uh, bank statements. Okay. And uh, front state productivity enhancements are especially visible in high contact services. So some improvement only require passive acceptance, while others require customer to change behavior. Uh, you should consider impact on customers and address customer resistance to change, and better to conduct market research if changes are substantial. Okay. And this is the keyword is front state productivity visible in high contact. Then one example is the design of lobby and frontline staff should be trained uh, yeah should be trained uh, very very serious okay. and then uh, this is the cautions of cost reduction strategy in absence of new technology most attempt to improve service productivity seeks to eliminate waste and reduce labor costs okay. Uh, and workers who try to choose several things at once may perform its task poorly. This is, uh, yeah, uh, very careful, guys. Sometimes we think that we need to reduce costs, okay? We choose in this one and this one, and then to combine uh, jobs done by less workers, but uh, be careful about the quality. So, poorly service can be achieved, right? So, this is very dangerous. And excessive pressure breeds discontent and frustrations among customer contact personnel who are caught between meeting customer needs and achieving management productivity goals. So this is also related to number two. So be careful about the happiness and satisfaction of the customers. And then lastly, to better to search for service process redesign opportunities that leads to improvement in productivity, simultaneous improvement in service quality so guys uh so uh i think this this all the slides uh we have covered so um just to highlight that productivity and service quality i think is close uh related okay very very close uh, related so don't uh if you want to achieve higher service quality and of course it become a significant factors to achieve higher productivity but be careful um, and achieving a higher productivity doesn't mean that we uh, cut every cost okay so uh, all the strategies that uh, we have already covered mentions that if he wants to do that strategy so please take a look the impact to other uh, characteristic or uh, yeah this is one example that uh, when you want to cut costs in many uh yeah many many divisions or many processes but be careful about the quality of service that delivered okay Thank you guys. Hopefully that uh, it uh, this material give you um, basic understanding of the connections and relationship between service quality and productivity. Thank you. Stay safe and stay healthy.